don't know. I'm trying to figure this out. There we go. We are now live. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. This is our third installment of a Behind the Workshop uh, interview series. Uh, tonight, we are sitting down and talking with Charlotte Lanasa, our dramaturg for Forward, a new work series. Um, my name is Jason Tamburini. I'm the artistic director for Prologue Theater. Uh, so welcome, Charlotte. Thanks for being here tonight. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Um, so I feel like there's probably a lot we could talk about before even talking about dramaturgy and your theater experience, and all that stuff, because there is some stuff going on in, in the world right now. But yeah. I'd like to just kind of recognize that for a moment and then move past. It. Um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind day for anybody in the DC area. And uh, rather than get bogged down by that, I thought we would just keep going forward. Uh, no pun intended on that promise. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, Charlotte, if you could maybe just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, generally speaking, your experience with workshops uh, and the roles you've played in. Yeah, um, so I am a theater maker. I have worn several different hats. I have been a, a director more than anything else, but also, but really started um, with the intention to be a dramaturg. Um, and then dramaturgy has woven its way into my um, experience uh, since graduating college. So I, um, I, I've come up in the world of new work almost exclusively. I interned at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center and New Dramatists, um, which are both new play hubs. Uh, the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center um, does a uh, does six different conferences over the course of the summer. Um, one for new music theater, one for new plays. Uh, in the new music theater, they develop three musicals. The uh, uh, the plays they develop eight plays each gets a two week rehearsal process culminating in a reading not not dissimilar from forward um, and new dramatist isn't a place to produce work it's a place to uh, to work on plays um, in more of an internal setting so most of their most of what they do is can be shared with the public but it's more invited public than it is um, for the entire our world to see. So those those two experiences were formative. Um, and from there, I wrote plays, did some literary management for a small theater company in New York City called Amios, um, and then came down south and taught for three years and worked with CATF, where I was a dramaturg and assistant director for um, several different plays over the course of two seasons. And now I'm now I'm here in DC, and I'm a writer and a director, um, also and directing and dramaturging mostly new plays. Very glad to have you down here. Not gonna lie. Um, a shout out as always to CATF for any of them watching. Um, <laughs> so, as why not? Um, so as far as your role with Forward and your experience, I mean, as as a dramaturg. Um, a lot of people don't really know what a dramaturg is. Um, and so maybe we can move a little bit into just dramaturgy and like kind of a, a two-parter question with two very large sides to this question. What is, one is, what is dramaturgy? And then the other side of that being, why dramaturgy or why is um, so maybe tell us a little bit about what the role of a dramaturg is, how, um, and how dramaturgs work with the production. Yeah, so I want to start off with a quote from another dramaturg who is also working with Forward, um, our director right now, um, uh, Otis Ramsey Zoe. Uh, he said in rehearsal today, whenever you speak in absolutes, um, the the opposite is like gonna come up no matter what. 
Um, and I, and anticipating this conversation, I was I thought, oh my gosh, that so applies to describing what dramaturgy is. Um, so what I um, the dramaturg is first and foremost responsible for the text um, to support the text. Um, one easy way to define what a dramaturg does is to define what they don't do. Um, there are six elements of theater, right? And so you have um, you have the sound designer working who's who's listening for what, what the world sounds like. You have the director who's uh, divvying up the action. You have the writer who's creating the language. Um, and you have the actors who are who's trying if so the dramaturg's job is not to create the world or uh, or create language. The dramaturg is there to support the playwright um, as they try to uh, reveal the world of the play. Um, so a dramaturg might offer um, thoughtful questions in the room um, or uh, or support the playwright by and the cast and director um, by providing research. Um, or the dramaturg um, might be there to um, question the logic behind particular lines or the, uh, the logic of the structure of the story. Um, how do we get from, uh, from beginning to middle to end? And how, does the, how is every element of the play germane to that journey? So would it be, is it in essence then a dramaturg, and I, again, I'm now, now that you've said this, I'm going to avoid speaking in uh, what was whatever. Absolute. Uh. Um, would you say that a dramaturg then is, serves as an assistant to all of the different jobs in, in, a, in a way? It can be, a dramaturg can be a resource. Mm -hmm. um, but first and foremost, the playwright. The dramaturg is there to support the playwright and be their wing woman. Next, okay, cool. Um, so would you, is there, as far as productions go um, and the dramaturg's role in each production, um, and that can differ, as I'm, I'm aware, and I'm sure on every production, it's, it can be vastly different from a hugely intensive, time-consuming, world consuming kind of uh, gig to a fair, fairly light research gig with some follow through, some follow up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Would, is that, is it the same in a full production as it would be or as it is in a workshop in your opinion, in your, in your experience? It totally depends on the play and it totally <laughs> depends on um, what style of collaboration you have going and also how, like, how old the play is. Like, are, is, is it, is it an adolescent play? Is it a play that like is fresh off the printer for the first time? Um, there's so it, it is what the dramaturg is basically there, um, to support the text and make sure that the playwright's intentions are fully realized in whatever, way that calls to them. Um, in my work at CATF, which did the, the best uh, parallel for this is forward versus versus what I did at CATF, um, which was full production. And there my, um, I worked on two history plays while I was there. And so that was a, that was a really specific type of dramaturgy where um, there's references in the text that need to be um, like clearly laid out so that they're easily findable mm -hmm. um and so th that you do research for and make it efficient and accessible but then uh the dramaturg can also be a resource to uh orient the company um in how that story fits in the historical context um so the story might not necessarily change um the story like what people do is what they do right the choices mm -hmm. that they make um are the choices that they make, but um, the dramaturg can be a resource for how how are these choices in some way a product of the environment if the play happens in a historical context. Um, so for a production, 
um, that can be really helpful. And the dramaturg might be there um, up through tech to, to say, um, hey, if we're following by the, the manners rules in the 1930s, this is how you're gonna wanna um, navigate this costume or justify this action with what you're wearing and, and how you handle the gloves and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, um, for uh, another really good example of, of when a dramaturg might need to be there like all the way through is in ensemble work and devised work, um, which I haven't personally done, um, but I understand that that can be uh, very helpful in making sure that um, all the elements um, stay grounded in the story and fit and fitting this uh, the elements into the story because those uh, those works develop so much over time. Mm -hmm. um, so and then in full with, with forward in a workshop where it's just a reading, you're not thinking about a production, you're not thinking about lights tech and whatever, um, the dramaturg is there uh, kind of like a middleman between the director and the playwright um, to help uh, uh, generate questions that are um, that are helpful and that are um, efficient because you can't, it is very easy to give feedback that is um, damaging. And so you wanna make sure that um, that in inquiry about language, hmm. um, that that is that that feedback isn't rooted in I have this this roadblock, um, and is instead rooted in um, how can we make this more honest, and having an objective uh, resource there that isn't responsible for um, building trust with the act. Well, I mean, you want to build trust with the actors, you want to build trust with anyone in the company, but having an objective. Um, person there who isn't helping the actors make choices, isn't saying this is where this breath needs to be, or um, this is what I think your internal world is, um, is very helpful um, in bouncing back and forth. Oh, now. absolutely. I mean, speaking as, as a director, sometimes just having a new set of eyes on something, because you, you get so you get a little bit of tunnel vision at times, especially in specific parts and having someone with an objective voice in the room can be incredibly helpful. Absolutely. Um, and that that's, I think the, the, the objectivity and the uh, degrees of separation between um, a dramaturg and like needing to make sure the actors are prepared and feel in their core that they're ready mm -hmm. um, is, is what makes that role helpful. Cool. Um, Something I forgot to mention at the very beginning, for anyone who is joining us or watching, uh, if you have any questions or want to post any comments through this, um, I'll be kind of keeping an eye on that. So we'll address them as they come in. Um, and of course, now to slightly throw Charlotte off a little bit, I this did not intend to do this in the beginning. Um, I kind of have a question that, that's not on the list of questions I kind of Sweet. gone. Um, so, as a dramaturg, it sound from what, the way you're describing it, it, there's a lot of, it's very evident, um, there's a lot of research involved and, and presentation of that research and uh, streamlining of those kinds of things to support the, to support the, the wow, I'll try that again, to support the playwright, <laughs> to support the production, to support the director. Um, but it is more than just research uh, kind of essentially being a librarian of sorts yeah uh, what are what would you how would you describe some of the other skills that come into play and also like other parts of the job description mm -hmm. uh, that are more or less typical of any dramaturgy gig uh, obviously not right so the best way to uh, say what I do, beyond that is like sit back listen gather information in the room of what um what people are um where people are are lost or where questions keep circling back around and then uh distill those into finite questions um as few as possible about the world of the play mm -hmm. um so 
the dramaturg's job, um, there's a um, there's a great essay called Journey to a Small Planet um, that describes how do you um, how to create a story in the way how, that you explore um, a whole new a whole new planet. Like what are the laws? How, what are the social rules? What are the geographic rules? Um, and what makes that so uh, revealing to dramaturgy um, for the story um, and not like the research, not the context, um, but the actual story is the drama, like the dramaturg's job isn't to um, create the world and the dramaturg's job isn't to find a path around each mountain. The dramaturg's job is like the cartographer um, to uh, take a look at the world and take a look at, we want to get from point A to point B. How do we make a map that fully realizes the world and is consistent? Um, so consistency and the rules of the world um, are uh, something that I'm tracking and taking notes on constantly. Um, and then I'll just sit with that. I might be quiet in the room more than uh, I think people would expect with my personality. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're very quiet. You're like, it's, you really set your ego aside and just like listen and mm. synthesize. Um, and then you, and then you ask, what if, um, what if the uh, action or conflict of this play took place in this world, um, in the rules that are, that the playwright has created and how do we make sure that those rules are consistent and how do we make sure that, um, they bring about the story? That's really, that's really interesting. Uh, when you were describing that idea of like, you feel like you're more of a cartographer. I was actually thinking just before you said cartographer, I was actually thinking like, so you're essentially a historian, a sociologist, an anthropologist for this like, brand therapist. new world and the therapist. <laughs> um, but like, it, cause it really is true though, that this, that every play is its own, I mean, it may live in a world that other plays also kind of live in, but like it's its own closed, uh, environment so to speak and so yeah i mean that idea of like keep keeping track of and and date and all the all of the uh uh historical research and societal research and the rules and like almost like creating all of these systems and keeping track of them yeah all and by rules all i mean like in the in the play we just did, American You, um, the characters told a lot of stories, and so a rule of that play was when X happens, um, uh, so and so produces a story, um, mm -hmm. or so and so creates, um, so and so communicates their wants and desires by um, telling a tall tale. Uh, that's one way to think of a rule, not necessarily social constructs, mm -hmm. um, but or, or like, how does time move? How do we, um, what mm -hmm. launches us in, what launches us into um, a different location um, or a different style? If a, if a playwright is playing with two different styles, what launches us between one style and the next? Okay, that's cool, yeah. Um, so I'll go back to some of the questions that I had prepared to ask you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because so I mean, we're talking less. a lot about all the about all the research and about sitting and listening and asking what if. Um, as far as the research part of the dramaturgy or dramaturgical process is, um, how do you decide, or is it a decision? Is it more of a team decision, or is it specifically a dramaturg's decision? Uh, what is and is not worth research? Um. So the research part of being a dramaturg is really not that different from being a director where you have to like, you have to know all the references in the play. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just take that and then take it a step further into um, how does this world operate and how does this serve the structure of the story. Um, so I, I, and then I can, I, I can also 
hone in on that a little bit more and be a resource in the room to make access to that information as efficient as possible so that people aren't like pulling out their phones and Googling the like the reign of terror while they're also trying to deep dive into their character backstory um, or like figuring out a specific line from uh, the movie, The Mummy and like what context they set it in. Um, like so, like there's, there's an extent to which the research is, um, there's an extent to which like the research is shared between the dramaturg and the director. And if you have a dramaturg in the room, then the dramaturg is there to kind of take that off of their shoulders sometimes. Um, like when I did uh, Memoirs of a Forgotten Man, that was absolutely the case because there was just so many, that was a, a vast timeline of Russian history um, that they, sometimes we just had questions in the room that needed really specific dates very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was like the most librarian-ish uh, research dramaturgy that I've done. Um, but that was also, ex that was also so specific to that play um, and why that was essential. Um, that is all the, probably the closest I've come to that, um, is this process for Monsters of the American Cinema, because there's so many references to the movies. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's my job to make sure that all of those are like fully justified, um, and, uh, question the conventions within the play that they hold. Uh, as far, sorry, I, I kind of, I, I segued a little bit. Um, your initial question was how do I decide what to research? Um, I look at the elements of the play that the, that those references come up in, like, are they illusions or are they references? Um, okay. if they're an illusion, um, then like a character might be embodying, um, a historical figure when they speak, or they might be embodying a, um, a, a, another, a character from another um, work of art, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then in that case, then I need to learn about that whole world. Um, but if it's just a reference, then it's a quick explanation, right? Um, so if, if it's, an, allu if it's um, an illusion, then I'll break that down into elements um, of what makes that world the way it is. Mm -hmm. and do deeper research into that. Um, and if it's just a reference, then I, then it's just the checklist, right? Um, so I make a checklist in the same way that it, that a research historian would make a checklist of like, um, origin, uh, source material that the playwright used is really mm -hmm. helpful and essential. So I always ask like what, what inspired this play and more often than not, the playwright will come back with, well, I read this book or I watched this movie, or I had this personal experience that also ha involved these. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also ask, is there like a buddy, is there buddy material for this? Is there a play that you, that like, that you used as a guide to help you structurally? Okay. Um, and, uh, and then I'll ask, uh, are these references um, things that the characters are confronting in their day-to-day -day life? Or are they references that reveal something about their internal world? Um, and so that will also determine, um, am I looking more, uh, that will also determine what elements um, I'm looking for. Okay. Um, completely hypothetical question, just because my brain came up with it just now. Do all of these types of questions um, and the, and where you look and all of that, would that remain the same if you were working on a, an adaptation of a piece um, where you might not necessarily be able to find out specifically who, what the original author was, was using as source material or what their inspiration was? I would try and keep that as, I would try and like forget about the source material if it was yeah. an adaptation, because I would, in that, then that's like developing a new play, right? Um, you want to, you want to be familiar with it, but you mm -hmm. want, you're in that case, the priority is even greater to make sure that um, the, the, the new, the reincarnation is its own entity mm -hmm. and that it is also honest as it stands alone. Interesting. Um, 
Because so, like that yeah. other playwright wrote that other play. Yeah. And like this playwright is writing this play. Yes. Like why? I mean, we all know theater has to ask like, why here, why now? And so that that I would probably try and stay in the present as much as possible. Okay. Um, sorry, distilling that. Yeah, no, that's... Um, I like, so, it, it's, yeah. so, it's so subjective because it's a collaborative art form. And mm -hmm. being a dramaturg first and foremost means that you're a good collaborator and that you're building trust and you're meeting people where they are. Um, so it, it, that's why, um, the options are so varied. Like there, there are some things that, that you do that carry over from one project to the next. Um, but ultimately you just really have to be present, um, and, uh, encourage people to be as honest as they possibly can be with themselves as artists and encourage the play to be as honest as it can possibly be with itself as a story. Okay. Um, what, uh, not every production, I mean, there's, I've, I've worked on several productions where we didn't have a dramaturg. So, I mean, not every production has a dramaturg working on, in the process, um, whether it be a, a full production of a published play or a workshop of a new piece or a development or something. Um, what are some of the reasons and or kind of, uh, What's the rationale, I guess, behind bringing a, a dramaturg into the process? Uh, aside from obviously all of the things you've mentioned, like this is what a dramaturg <laughs> does. Um, I mean, or I guess, yes. I guess what's, what's some of the rationale behind that, but then also do you have any thoughts as to why maybe dramaturgs aren't always brought into the process? Hmm. Well, I've never been a producer, so I don't, and no one has ever looked at me in the face and been like, this is why we're not hiring a dramaturg. Um, well, actually, that's not totally true. Um, at New Dramatists, there were rarely dramaturgs in the room, and that's because everyone in that context was a dramaturg. Um, every artist on some level is a dramaturg. Um, I think all of us in our day-to-day -day lives dramaturg our lives as much as we can, mm -hmm. um, where we try and uh, assess how do we uh, whatever, that's a tangent. Um, why should you have a dramaturg? Sarah Roll has a really great essay called Love Letter to Dramaturgs. And it it opens with like, we need you to hold our hands when previews go wrong. Like we need you to hold our, like we need you to like hold our hair when we vomit. Um, this makes playwrights sound more dramatic than they re than like they have to be. Um, we need you to hold our hair when we vomit because like an actor was mean to us or something like that. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's essentially for some, for the playwright to have someone in their corner. Um, like the director uh, is steering the ship. Um, and when you have uh, the text in front of you and an, and an actor saying, I don't know how I'm supposed to get from point A to, B to point B. I don't know how this is, how this, how my objective is sustained here, it can be really easy to scapegoat the, the text. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, having a dramaturg there can be uh, really helpful um, to uh, make sure that the intentions of the play are fully supported and fully realized. Um, and also to like, you don't have the, the pressure to perform the way everyone else does. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think that that, um, like I've even heard stories of dramaturgs making really big like safety calls where it's like this, that we, this happens usually in the staging for this play. Um, like not because um, it's super cool but because it's the safest thing for the actors. And so mm -hmm. um, having an extra voice there to say, hey, like this is the truth of the story um or hey like this is the truth of being a collaborator can be uh can can be really helpful cool um so I'm, and i'm learning so much more about just dramaturgy in general and i and have been over the past couple of months but um <laughs> kind of wish i had known more about it when i was significantly younger and kind of go move on my way into theater as a field um, if you could, 
I guess, and this is going to be super hard because obviously it's different for everybody, but um, describe some of the uh, skills and or mm. things a student or a person who might be interested in working as a dramaturg or going into dramaturgy, some of the things that they might need or want to know beforehand. Um, that's a great question. Um, there's so much I wish I knew when I was a senior in college, um, considering this. Number one, uh, find out how plays were made. Like your favorite works, um, figure out who made them and who they worked with and what, like what phases they had to go through to end up uh, with the product that they have now. Um, other skills, learn how to listen and, um, learn how just question 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 everything keep your curiosity rabid cool i'd take that um <laughs> great um i'm trying to think if i'm looking to see if i had any questions on this list um i don't i don't know if i did i it's a lot of a lot of typing um <laughs> was there anything you think we missed uh in especially in just kind of this idea of kind of what or why dramaturgy um i i mean it, it's it, it i i think we've covered a lot i think I've, I've had a lot of fun uh deep diving and uh my own philosophy on dramaturgy is evolving um mm. as you can tell um but yeah i would I hope that uh, Prologue keeps considering hiring uh, folks on, especially yeah. as they continue to do new work. Awesome. And everyone should, everyone can get their feet wet with dramaturgy, no matter if you're an actor or uh, especially, definitely if you're a director. Um, but yeah, don't, uh, what I would say is like, don't be scared of it. Um, uh, do a deep dive on structure. Uh, and and you'll feel better as an artist yeah and i think that that's i think that's great advice especially i mean like the idea that there are jobs and positions that work on a production that maybe not everybody has heard of and the first time you hear about it you're like oh what is that i i, I that's that's too much you know it, they become scary um so just getting getting to to know all these other other facets of theater in general but then like finding the way your your way in for people who are interested in, in being involved is is interesting yeah. um well charlotte thank you so very much for your time for everyone or anyone watching um our next reading for forward in new york series will be of monsters of the american cinema by christian st croix it will be on friday january january 12th 12th 15th just kidding <laughs> Dang it. Friday, January 15th at 8 p.m. Uh, for more information about that, please visit our website, www.prologtheater.org. Uh, again, Charlotte, thank you so very much for your time tonight, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks for having me, Jason. This was a blast. Awesome. Goodbye. Bye. Oh.